Welcome to the kingdom. Lord of Lords, you are. 
the great I am, the great I am, you are the righteous one, you are the righteous one, you are you're the living word, the living word, you are my savior, yes, you are, savior, yes, you are. Oh, yeah, because you live, because you, live, you are because you died, you are because you died, you are because you rose, you are because you rose, you are Lord of Lord, you are the Lord of Lord, you are the great I am, you are the great I am, you are the righteous one. Righteous one, you are. You're the living word. The living word, you are. My Savior, yes, you are. My Savior, yes, you oh, are. Oh, yes, just because. Just because you are. Lord, just because you are God, yes, you are. Just because you are. We worship you with all of our heart, with all of our soul. Just because you are. There is no one like you, Lord. There is no one like you just because you are and we give you all of the praise yes we do yes you are just because you are my savior just because just because you are no one like you jesus just because everybody just because you are we love you lord we praise you lord just because just because you are I declare Jesus is Lord Just because you're you are You're my Savior, you're my Savior, you're my Lord Just because you are And we worship you because Yes, you are Just because you are Hallelujah, yeah, yeah Hallelujah. Atmosphere Thank you, Jesus continue to worship him continue to let him know who he is in your life hallelujah oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes there is only one name there is only one with power to save, with power to save. Come on, everybody, there is only one name. There is only one name.
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Join hands now, if you will, beloved. We want to spend the next few moments praying one for another, as well as some requests by the saints concerning family members. Welcome those of you that have joined us online, whether it's streaming or on Facebook. Thank you for joining on this Tuesday night. We're going to ask that you join us in prayer there in your homes. The Bible says to pray ye one for another. So would you begin to do that now, praying one for another, even there in your homes. Pray one for another as we come before our Heavenly Father. Father, we just thank you now in Jesus' name and we praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the power of agreement. We thank you for the power of united prayer. We thank you that you says when we come together that we are to love one another, we are to serve one another, but we are to also pray one for another. So even as we gather tonight, Lord, we gather in your name. In your name, Lord, the name above every name. And we thank you for our brother and sister whose hands we hold. We thank you, Father God, that we bring them before your throne room of grace. We, as a little child grabbing their brother and sister's hand, we grab our brother and sister's hand and we bring them before our loving, caring, sharing Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Lord, that they are your child. We thank you that you know them. We thank you that you know what things they have need of. So, Father, we're asking you, would you address every concern? Would you address every need? Would you address everything that is weighing on them tonight, Lord? Those that's in streaming land, we pray for them and their families. Those on Facebook, those watching us by stream, we pray for them. Father God, you know their names. Would you address their concerns? Would you address their needs, Father, in the name of Jesus? And we thank you for that even now. If it's a healing need, we thank you for addressing it. If it's a financial need, we thank you for addressing it. If it's a relationship need, we thank you for addressing it, Father. Whatever it may be, God, whatever it may be, your word says that you will supply all our needs. You are all God. You take care of everything. So we thank you now, Lord. We pray for something as simple as strength and encouragement, and hope, Lord God, and joy and peace, Father God, in Jesus' name, that during this holiday season, our brothers and sisters would not be oppressed and depressed and discouraged, but they would be encouraged, Father God. They will be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. They will be strengthened by your spirit in the inner man. We're praying, God, that you will lift up every head that hang down, that you will lift up every head that hang down, Lord, and encourage them. Let them know you got them. You have them in the palm of your hand. You have their loved ones in the palm of their hand, Lord, in your hand. And we thank you for that now in Jesus' name, Father. Father, we mentioned Elder Verna's brother-in-law, Father God, concerning the situation with his health, Lord God. We pray, Father God, we send our prayers to Elder Verna's brother-in-law father and we pray for a recovery from this stroke lord in the name of jesus we pray oh god in jesus name that there be no distant in prayer and that you would touch his body that you would touch his body that you would touch his body lord in jesus name god you're still able to make him recover your word says father god these signs shall be shall follow them that believe in my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover now he's not here but elder Vern is here and father we touch her on his behalf and we are asking for her brother-in-law to recover father in the name of jesus we're praying for her sister and the entire family lord that they would be encouraged that you would surround them with people of prayer people of faith father and that they would stand with them father we know lord god in jesus name when people have these episodes that there's various things that happen but God you're the God that can make the crooked things straight you're the one that can stretch out the withered hand that can cause the eyes to see the ears to hear the lame to walk the deaf to speak Lord and we just gonna believe that you still are the same God because you say you're the Lord our God and you change not you said that Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever so by the power that's in his name 
and in Jesus' blood. We thank you for recovery, not only for Elder Verner's brother-in-law, Father God, but for everyone in our midst, Father God, for every member of the kingdom, for those that are in grief right now, God. We pray for everyone that's grieving this holiday season because they do not have a loved one, Father God, with them in Jesus' name. We pray for the spirit of comfort and consolation. You said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And Father, no one really understands grief unless you've been through it, Lord God. So for, for all of our loved ones and friends that's grieving, would you comfort them? Would you strengthen them, Lord God? Would you touch them? In the name of Jesus, just let those hands go, beloved. Just lift up your hands on the God, we're just receiving for loved ones and friends, Lord. Like spiritual antennas, we're just receiving. We're setting our spiritual antennas to receive, Father, from you tonight. To receive healing, to receive encouragement, to receive strength, to receive peace, to receive joy, Father God. To receive hope, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, it seemed like, Father God... It's one thing after another. Father, it even seems like it's like the situation with Job. After this happened, then that happened, then that happened, then this happened. God, we need your grace. That's sufficient. We need your grace. That's sufficient. Paul said for this, he prayed to you three times, Lord, to let it depart from him. But you said, my grace, yeah, my grace is sufficient for you. And from the pulpit to the pew, God, we all leaning on that grace tonight. We're leaning on that grace tonight, Lord. We're leaning on that grace tonight. We're leaning on that grace tonight. From the pulpit to the pew, God. From the pulpit to the pew, even myself, God, regarding our, my, my brother-in-law's death and, and challenges in different family members' bodies, God. We're thanking you, God. We're leaning on that grace that is sufficient. And we pray. Because so many people look to us for prayer. So many people look to us to stand with them. But God, we that pray for people, we need a touch now, Lord. We need Anybody going to agree with me? We need a touch now, Lord. Not that we don't mind praying for this one. We don't mind praying for the other. God, there's so many people that look to us for prayer to be the spiritual giants. But we come tonight saying, God, touch us, strengthen us, help us, Lord, to be strong, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us not to be depleted of strength and hope and joy and peace, Lord. Let us be refueled and refilled, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. So we thank you now, Lord, for the power of prayer, for the promises of prayer. But most important, that you're the person to whom we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Give God a hand. Praise you, man. Amen. Be seated just for a minute, beloved. Be seated just for a minute. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Good evening, kingdom family. Amen. Let me try that again. Good evening, kingdom family. Come on now, it's the holiday. Somebody smile. You got listen, listen, even though it listen, listen, we all going through something. Are you listening to me? I, I told my wife the other day we were discussing just different things that was going on. And anybody know what it is to be emotionally drained? That sometimes you just emotionally drain. What about mentally drained? Real talk, amen? And sometimes with me, be a bottom line guy, you know what I mean? Sometimes when it comes to situations, just get me to the bottom line so we can pray and get through this, you know what I mean? Because sometimes it just weighs on you emotionally and emotionally and emotionally and mentally and mentally and mentally, and it's, it's meant to wear you out, actually, amen? amen? To make you weary. But how many of you believe, again, we believe they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Are y'all listening to me? Or what about this one? When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Well, what about this one? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. What about this one? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What about this one? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and you shall find rest. Ah, you shall find what? Oh, I'm sensing the Holy Ghost. And you shall find what? You shall find rest for your souls. And when I came, remember nothing else. I can always remember this one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm just going to say it till you get built up. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I'm going to shout now. He restores my soul. He does what? He He what? Jesus, what a wonder. Is that it? Hold on. Walk, walk with me, Dick. I need you to be on, on point. Jesus, what a wonder. What is it? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. We got you. Uh, no. In my soul, Say he's a wonder. In my soul, he's a wonder. In my Say it like you learned it. He He's a wonder in my soul. The Lord, He's a wonder in my soul. The Lord, the Lord, He's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder in my, my soul. Come on. Let him release you tonight. Let him release you from oppression and depression and discouragement. Let him release you from depression and discouragement and heaviness. He's a wonder. I 
said, I, I don't, don't believe he's brought me this far. I said, I don't believe he's brought me this far. I said, I don't believe he's brought me this far. I said, I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. One more time. He's a what? He's a wonder <laughs> in my soul. Come on, one time. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my Give God a hand praise right there, everybody. Come on, we needed that. Come on, anybody going to join me in, in thanking him for his presence? Come on, in the presence of the Lord. Come on, thank you for the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Come on, thank you for the, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Put on the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Kamisha. Hallelujah. Two things about Sister Kamisha. She can bake incredible sweet potato pies and sing. <laughs> All right, stand and open your Bibles to Psalms 103. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you now. Thank you that praise steals the enemy. Somebody agree with me, please. That praise steals the enemy. It stops him right in his tracks. It shuts his mouth up. And we thank you that we put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Thank you for the psalmist ministry, Lord. Thank you for the psalmist. Thank you that we have people in our midst like David, that when David played, the evil spirit departed from Saul. We thank you for that kind of atmosphere. Now bless our time around the word, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for standing for the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Psalms 103, Psalms 103. Thank you. Again, welcome those of you that's joining us online on Facebook. And streaming, thank you for joining us tonight for our Bible study. Amen, Kingdom family. Amen. Let's give God a hand for, for those that's online. Amen. Well, the few or many, we still celebrate them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to Psalms 103. I'm going to start reading, first of all, the essential team from the King James Version. King James Version of Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5. Amen. It says, Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Now read verse 3 through 5 with me from the King James Version. Ready? Let's read. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, the New Living Translation, New Living Translation, verse 1 through 5, Sister Patricia, please, it says this. New Living says, let all that I am 
praise the Lord with my whole heart. Are y'all listening to me? I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am. Somebody say, let all that I am. Come on, come on. Say, let all that I am. Thank, thank you, Elder Burner, in a text recently with the leadership, how you said you were still hinging on all that's within me. To be honest with you, that would have been, Brenda, a good theme for 2023. All that's within me in 2023. That would have been good, amen? <laughs> it could still be personal. <laughs> I'm, I'm following my pastor, Pastor Bell in CCI, but I like that. When you said that, I heard something. I said, all that's within me. Go through 2023, all that's within me. Go through 2023, all that's within me. Are y'all listening to me? Well, maybe I'm the only one. Amen. You got to, no, you got to have a, Jennifer, you got to have an all that's within me. That's one of them radical, devil, I don't care how much hell you bring. All that's within me, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Are y'all listening to me? Because cause you'll be surprised on, on, just after a high that we had on Sunday. Did we not have a great time on Sunday? After a high like that, here comes the devil. After a high like that, here comes the devil. That's when you got to tell him, I will bless the Lord at all times. Are y'all listening to me? And I really mean that. You know, and, and it's not that we don't identify with you, because whether it's your brother-in-law uh, Sister Terry's uh, mother, uh, uh, my brother-in-law, who, who we just buried, who died on Tuesday, we buried him on Saturday. And I'm sitting next to my, one of my baby sisters, and she's holding his shirt, picking his shirt like this, you know, saying he always he loved this shirt. You, you know what I mean? Amen. What do you do in times like that? You know what I mean? That's when you got to listen. It's called a sacrifice of praise. Are y'all listening to me? Because if, if, if we go down, if we let ourselves go there, we're going to go down and down. Hear me now. And I'm, and I'm not saying nothing that's easy. Because he's going to go down and down. And that's what Satan wants us. He wants us to press, so press and discourage. Amen? Amen. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm saying something, just being real with you, that your pastor have to even do by faith. Because it's always something being bought to me. I had to lovingly tell somebody, I'm, at times I feel like an emergency room doctor where I'm running from room to room. Now, don't get me wrong. The pastor ain't bothered about things. But see, and it depends on every situation as to how much time I have to give in the room. Amen. It's not that those doctors are impatient with you in the emergency room. That's why it's called an emergency room. They can't spend a whole lot of time. Okay, well, okay, your anchor is just broken. Okay, so we're going to reset that. And we, oh, he wasn't in here in no time. Somebody over here is having a heart attack. Your anchor can be, are y'all listening to me? You know what I mean? But life is like that for all of us. Because a lot of you have relationships, Leslie, listen now, with God for real. So you know who's going to bring you their situations? All your family and friends. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? This is not in my notes, but are you? See, now, in one sense, you're blessed that they lean on you for that. But how many of you know it, it is said that the man's shoulders was the, listen, listen, don't miss it. And I'm not just, I'm not just rambling. Stay with me. There's a lot of intercession that goes into these services. It is said that, that men's shoulders are designed for only one ruck, racks, or what's that we call? Rucksack. You see what I said? But people look at us because they think we're spiritual giants, Deacon Zoe and God's son. And they'll think we got our rucksack, and then they want you to carry their rucksack, and they got you, you, you carrying their rucksack. So, so here's the thing that we got we to gotta realize. You got to know, listen, what's meant for you to carry and what's not meant for you to carry. I wish I had some help up in there. Are, are, are y'all listening to me? You know what I mean? That's why it's important that you got to, listen, they come to you, you're like, you're like a, a, a traffic sign. You're to point them to Jesus. Amen. Are you listening to me? You, you come to me? Are, are you hearing me? Because this, hear me, hear me. If a lot of us let people constantly load us with burden after burden after burden after burden, you will be depressed. 
You'll be discouraged. Oh, I wish I had some help. Okay, he said, bear ye one another's burdens. Bear ye what none of us could do. Now, we had another exercise that we'd done in the military, Sergeant. You know what I mean? But we had one where we put your friend on your back and carried him. But you know what I was never able to do, Nate? It's being five feet, seven and three quarters, and I want my three quarters. I was never able to carry more than one dude on my back. And I remember in basic training when we had to do that final exam. You know who they put you with when you had to do the final exam, when you had to run through this and do all that and do all this? They put you with the weaker soldier, Maxine. And they put me with a sorry weak dude, too. And, and we running, we running, we running. And he's slowing down and slowing. You know, the time, we got time and all that. And so I'm, I got him like this. So deep, and, you know, and I'm the short dude. I'm ripped, but I'm short. And I'm picking, I'm, pick, I'm like, dude, we got to get this time in, dude. And the one thing that they said, though, you can't leave him. Uh, we can go home now. You, you got to tell him, boy, you're heavy, but I ain't going to leave you. You might be heavy, but I ain't going to. Are y'all listening to me? And our timing wasn't that good, by the way. But anyway, all right. Psalms 105, that was just an, uh, 103. That was just an impromptu moment. I pray you got something out of it. Because, again, they come to us. Now, it's a compliment that they come to us because they see God in us. Amen. Let me just tell you one story, and, this is, uh, and I'm going to move on. Look, this is a real story. That's a gentleman. His name is Kevin. That's not his real name. He's at the gym. He's a little older than me, a white gentleman. And every time I come to the gym just about now, he comes to me and tell me his latest doctor's report. He, he have his mask on, and I don't, I don't care what I'm doing. If I'm stretching, trying to warm up, he's going to come up to me. Watch this now. And he's going to say, I went to the doctor, and they had this. Okay, right? I can see him coming, Jennifer, from back there. He's going to come. Fred! <laughs> what? Kevin is not his name. I went to the doctor. Are you listening to me? And I was like, Lord, why is he always coming to me and telling me his doctor status. Because watch this now. Because he believed that when you pray, something's going to happen. We just casual acquaintances. We ain't boys, but he comes. And I'm saying, when people see that Christ in you like that, it's a compliment, Bev, in one sense. Are you listening to me? But you just got to listen. You got to know when to shift. And say, precious one, I've taught you, or I have discipled you and demonstrated to you how to call. Don't, it's like this, okay? See, it gets to, this is what Jesus said. And in that day, you should not ask me nothing. Mm -hmm. Anybody know their Bible? Mm -hmm. But whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. What was he saying? Okay. I've been with you, but now it's time that you graduate and know how to go to the Father for yourself. Are y'all listening to me? Because he said, and in that day, you shall not ask me nothing. But whatever you ask the Father, watch this now, he will give it you because you believe that I came from him. Even Jesus was saying, okay, guys, at a certain point, dog, don't come to me. You go to him for yourself. And if we truly discipling folk, we won't, listen, we won't raise them to be dependent upon us. Amen. But we'll appoint them to be dependent upon. Is that good? Is that good? All right, I think that's all I got for the night. <laughs> no, I really do. I really do. Okay. Uh, forget the notes. Okay. No, 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 no. I, no, no, no. I, you know I always got something. You do know. Don't look at me like that. Okay. Say we know. Y'all better say we know. Okay. Just a pastor, pastor, pastor more moment. The truth be told, when I got news that Lionel, my brother-in-law, died last Tuesday, they was burying him Sunday. See, this is how life happens. We had made plans, the whole story, to go to the Bayou Classic. We hadn't been to the Bayou Classic in years. That's in Southern and Gramlin, HB, you know, CU's play. And it's a, it's a, it's a, 
I'm, I'm sorry, miss. it's a party. <laughs> hey, let me just tell the truth. It's a festive time from the step show. Are y'all listening to me? To everything. And what happens? We own our way there, God's son, and the phone rings. I'm finna teach you about life. And so my baby sister, Erica, Fred, I just called you to tell you, my nail passed. Well, next day I was on my, in my sister's living room because that's what big brothers do. Pray with them and everything. Now, here's what we learn, what I'm learning. Bishop taught us that life consists of a series of letting go to move on. Life consists of a series of letting go to move on. Okay? Okay, let me, okay. Remember, Bo, when David was praying, I ain't forgot where I'm at, when David was praying for his baby, uh-huh. and the baby did what? What was David's next actions? He got up. Now watch what it says. He washed himself. That's going to refresh you. Changed his clothes. And the next place you find him is in the house worshiping. Can I say to us that sometimes that's a good description of what we should do? Listen, as, as I get ready to go home, David prayed and fasted. And listen, I'm a pastor. I'm going to say some things that some may not say. It bothers me like it bothers you when we pray for people to be healed, delivered, etc., etc., and it don't happen. And people die. When we was praying, we've had a pastor to die in our organization, and it was 200 people on the prayer line praying. Now, don't tell me that won't make some people say, now, wait a minute. That many people was praying and he still died? Sometimes, listen, we don't always understand why he done what he does. Are y'all, li- are y'all listening to me? But listen now, so here's the, the question. It's, it's what Job's wife said to him when he lost everything. He lost everything, and then Job did the way he did. And his wife said, you're not going to curse God and die? You know, curse God and die. After we have lost everything, because Satan knows Here's the thing. Watch this. Watch this, Elder. I heard a preacher preach this. I ain't going to even claim to, to claim to have the authority on it. He said, can, he preached a message to us called, can God trust you with trouble? Mm. That's a good one. Oh, Yesenia. And he went to Job's life. He said, how would you like to have just one of Job's days? His highest read. And it came to pass on a certain day that a, a guy came and told him, Minister Vincent, this happened. And right after he finished, another guy came and told him this happened. And this happened. And, this happened. and I ain't forgot where I'm at. Because here's the thing I'm trying to say is, with all this happening around us, you had better have a secret place. You better hear me. With all this happening around us, because see, cause see, nobody knows your personal warfare, Brenda. Better hear me. You had better have your secret place or it would drive you crazy. Are are y'all listening? Are y'all listening to me? Because whether it was from Ronnie, that's my sister, to Terry's mother, to, I mean, I can't think of all the various things right now. You you know what I'm saying? And it's almost, it's it's bombarding you. It's bombarding you, you know what I mean? But you got to do what David did. I'm going to pray. Commit it to God. The results are up to him, you sinner. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So when you, even though we had that happen in the, fa- in, the fu- in, in the family, we still did the best. Now, it wasn't the same because we, we had lined down on our mind, but we still made the best of our trip. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And came, because that's all you can do. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah, you mourn. And you mourn with them that mourn. Are you, are you getting me? But David gave us the prescription when you prayed about something, waited on God before it, and it still didn't go your way. You got to get up from where you are. Clean yourself off. In other words, get, he got him, when he washed, he was getting himself together. Because he said this. I, I love the text. You know, it would be done. He says, David looked at him. He noticed his servants talking. And you know when people whispering. And they said, David perceived that this child had died. And so David said, Commission, is the child dead? 
and they hesitated because they didn't know how he would respond. And they said, he is. They said, then David arose and went and he see he, when he watched himself, he's getting himself together. Mm-hmm. OK, then he go. Listen, because I ain't finished. Then he goes and changes his clothes. Leslie, then he goes and worship. Remember the last thing that happened? Oh, you got to read. Come on, Bible bus folk. Then he went and comforted his wife. Ah. And then what happened in the next few verses? As she conceived, because life goes on. Got it? Because life, sure, with hearts breaking, hearts hurting, life goes on. Bishop say life consists of a series of letting go to move on. Whether it's a relationship, because even as I thought about different people, um, one of the scriptures that I was going to read to you, and I had my wife read it to me um, when I was going to be talking about the benefits that God promises in Psalms 103. I was going to talk about the healing. Now, get ready to work with me uh, real quick, uh, Sister Patricia. But one of the scriptures I was going to quote to us to show you just how concerned God is for us and our total well-being was going to be Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Don't, don't go. Don't you turn. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. <coughs> uh, Sister Patricia, the Amplified Classic, I believe it is. This is what I want you to see because I want it people who have gone through this week. This is because when it was said in the text of Psalms 103, it says who healeth all our diseases, right? But what God was impressing upon me to release to us and we getting ready to go was how God heals us. Listen, not just of our diseases, but there's a lot of other sick places in our lives that we hurt. There's a lot of other Sick places in our life. I'm going to show it to you in the text. Watch this. Because this was, it's for some of my precious people who are pastor. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce that word is release. And when I was studying that minister, God says, and when you read it, son, tell them I'm releasing. Watch this. Wait, watch this now. From what though, pastor? To, watch this. To preach the good news. God, he sent me to preach release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to, to set forth as delivered those who are oppressed. Watch this. Who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. God wants you and I to be released from the bruises, from what's crushed us, what has broken us down by calamity. God wants us to be released. Again, God wants us to be released. Oh, come on, church. God wants us to be released. He said he sent me to announce release. To announce what? To announce what? To announce what? Release it in the house. To announce what? Release. What you want us to release? To release the captives and recover sight to the blind. To set, it, to set forth as delivered those who are oppressed. Who are to release the what? Downtrodden. To release the what? Downtrodden. To release the who? Yeah. Bruised. The downtrodden. Then the next one. Bruised. The next one. Crushed. And what? Broken down by. So God wants you released. God want because see, one of the things I was going to deal with in the text where it says, who healeth all our diseases, we always just focus on the physical diseases when there's a lot of mental, emotional, because see, the, the King, listen, the King James Version says it this way, to sit at liberty them that are bruised. And I remember in the ministerial class preachers that the preacher was trying to tell us what that Greek word bruise mean. And Elder George, it don't mean bruise like this, like, like, like an old scar that I got right here. It's talking about the things that happens internally. That God, no, 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 no. That God wants us. I'm not giving you religion. I'm giving you relationship with Christ. Because I, I used to say this to the prisoners. If I, if, if I don't want a Christianity that don't work here and now and now. 
I need a right now Christianity. And he said, as I was studying, he said, you, when you read release, you tell them and receive that they're being released. That they're being released. That they're being what? Released. That they're being what? Released. And he's releasing you from, from everything that is down, that's down, that's bruised, downtrodden. That's everybody dealing with something. Because even crushed. Exactly right, man. Because it's meant to crush your spirit. It's meant to crush your spirit, man. And I was just telling my precious wife in a moment of vulnerability to you, I said to her, not now, babe. See, again, we in a church where it's okay to say you're not okay. I said, not now, babe. I don't, I don't want nothing else on my mind. Because see, when you're a real shepherd, you feel what your people feel. Amen. I, I, I carry you in my heart. Are you listening to me? I'm not just hireling. I've been doing this now since I had a head full of hair. But I carry you in my heart. And I just told my wife, see, because you got to know when enough is enough. No, no, not now. Not now. No, no, no. No, no, no. And when you're in your time, as I get ready to close for the fifth time, and when you're in your time, protect your space. Amen. Hear me now. But listen, hear me, Kelly. And what, and what do I mean by that? See, hear me. Preacher taught me this. I'm teaching you a lot of stuff I learned when I was in, in ministerial class. He said, Preacher, you better deliver yourself from the savior, Savior's mentality. That you feel every situation you got to be involved in. And if you're not, here I come to save the day. If you're not involved, Deacon Walker, the situation can't be saved. Here's the truth. A lot of things that people are going through, they've been going through for a minute. So you're not going to get them through it overnight. Amen. Are you listening to me? So you, God, Jesus is the Savior, not you. Are you listening to me? So, see, see the, li listen, listen, beloved, listen. The doctors, medical doctors, have to avoid the God mindset. Remember, you ever saw that movie about where these doctors, that guy said, it was Alec Bowen, he said, I am God. Yeah. Well, see, see, the doctors, they used to say, God complex, I'm sorry. They have to get over having a God complex. Preachers have to get over being a savior complex. Well, we think, we got to be there involved in every little situation. That's how preachers burn out. That's how preachers end up resorting to drinking, drugs, cheating, and etc. Because if they don't have a personal life relationship with God, they have no real outlet. And you can only take so much. You can only take so much. Oh, I'm helping somebody. If you ain't been are you there? Uh, see, I'm just telling you real talk. It's unscripted. There ain't no notes up here. It's, re it's real talk. But I'm saying to some of you, you're not the God's little beast of burden. Are y'all listening to me? You, you, you pray with people, then you cast them on the Lord. You need to tell them, baby, you need to go home and pray about that. Are you listening to me? Because the longer you talk to them, see, then you walk away and you're walking like this now. And you feel like you didn't been through what they didn't been through. Now you went, you went there skipping, but you left there like, oh my God, oh man. And Satan know if he can keep us depressed and discouraged and downtrodden, we're vulnerable. I'm gonna close on this because Leslie, you know when he attacks, when you're weak and vulnerable and tired and tired and just tired so you'll just try to wear us out and wear us out and wear us out so i'm learning i'm learning i'm not the savior jesus is some things listen now you work with people and other things you just point them to jesus a part of Jesus. A part of Jesus. Are y'all listening to me? I don't know if you got anything out of what I said, but. 
<laughs> and y'all, 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 y'all want to see my notes to see what I had up here? Oh, y'all, yeah. I'm going to show them to you anyway. Because some of y'all are ungrateful. <laughs> oh, y'all saw my baby, my grandbaby. My grandbaby. I come prepared. I always come prepared. Baby. I always come. Okay, just for that, open your Bibles too. <laughs> Let's get ready to go home. Give God a hand, praise, and just love, peace, and blessings to those of you online. If y'all stayed while we were just talking, God bless you. Uh, just had an impromptu moment. Amen. Amen. Just an impromptu moment of me talking with my church. Father, we just love you and praise you. and We just thank you the way you do things. We always say how we want to be spirit-led and not get stuck, stuck in a ritual and routine. Help us, Lord. We really need you. And now more than ever, as I was telling my beautiful white father, it just seems like things are getting crazier and crazier by the minute. No place is safe for you to go without having to look to your left and right all the time. Things are just getting crazy, Father. But help us to be like the psalmist that said, when, the, when our hearts are overwhelmed, lead us to the rock. That's higher than I. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. Help us to stay safe, to stay in the secret place. As Elder Bernard shared with us years ago, you, your word says, he that dwelleth, not visit. So we want to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We want Psalms 911 to be your permanent, to be our permanent resident place. Dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Come on, dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Dwelling in the secret Thank you, Lord. Let that be our dwelling place. Not where we visit, but where you inhabit. In the name of Jesus, Father. For someone that might be watching tonight, we don't want to take anything for granted. You might have stumbled upon us by chance. And you might say, what is that guy talking about? We're just talking about life. Life happens. And so we just... Pray that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, one that may be online, because I found when I've just been out and about that different people would tell us that they are online with us, even though they may not comment. So we thank you for those that may be online, but, <laughs> but we never want to assume that we know everybody's spiritual state. And if there's anything I know that's what's most important to the Father, more than any offering, more than any song that we sing, more than any sermon that we preach. What's most important to the Father is the salvation of men and women, boys and girls. And, with, hear, me, and hear me if there's any young adults, Gen Xers, or the, the, whatever the latest one is that's watching. There's an attack on you young folk, and I pray that y'all recognize it. So many of y'all are being killed and murdered viciously. Why? Because Satan is after the seed. Satan is after the seed. Young people, hear, hear Pastor Moore. Yeah, I'm an older man. But hear this older man. One of the things, most of you know the story of Pharaoh and Moses in Egypt. And one of the things that Pharaoh wanted from Moses was to leave the children in Egypt. The devil wants y'all left in Egypt. He wants y'all to be his slaves. But for some young person, some young adult, even a teenager that may be watching, I want to encourage you. Give your life to Christ. In these days, it's crazy out there. Be like Noah and his family coming to this ark and be in a safe place. If you want to get your relationship right with God, pray this prayer with me, and God will meet you right where you're at. It's going to be a short prayer, but if you're sincere and honest, I guarantee you 
If you're sincere and honest and you're real about it, I can promise you, you'll never be the same. We, the kingdom family, we're going to pray with you. So just pray this prayer with us. If you need to give your life to Christ, if you need to rededicate your life, you become a gift to your family by becoming a new person in Christ this, this Christmas season. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Dear God in heaven, Dear God in heaven I, come to you I come to you according to your word. To your, word. Your, word says, your word says, if I come to you, you won't turn me away. So I come to you now. And I confess, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner against thee and thee only have I sinned and done evil in thy sight. But you said, if I confess my sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I confess my sins. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He died and he rose again for me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Help me to live a life that represents you and pleases the Father. Father God, like the prodigal son, I come to myself and I repent of my sins. Restore everything that sin, Satan, self has stolen out of my life. My joy, my love, my peace, all things that sin stole up my life. I come to you now. Thank you for receiving me and restoring all things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God a hand. Praise somebody. Amen. I want to also give you an opportunity to give. Don't forget those of you that's in the sanctuary. If you desire to give to the Lord, there is a giving station on the west side of our building in that little hallway you can give by giving that way. For those of you online, that QR code is perhaps the fastest and, and it's also a safe way to give. But if you choose, you can give by mail-in, by uh, downloading our church app, or by texting. If you punch your phone, point your phone towards the QR code, you can give that way as well. Our prayer is simple. We believe that as you give to the cause of Christ, as you give to the cause of Christ, God will bless you and give you back to you in the areas that you need it most. Anybody agree with me? Amen. Any givers in the house? Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Minister, let me go and finish, okay? Let me just go and finish. Go and stand. Go and stand. Join hands. Just join hands with each other. Just join hands. Everybody, everybody join in hands with somebody. Father God, we just need you and each other so much in these last days, in this time. Let us holding our brother and sister hands represent that you are holding our hands. My big daddy, Joshua Smith, always say, keep your hand in the master's hand. So Father, let us this season keep our hands in your hands. And when we let go of our brother and sister hand, we thank you that you've promised to hold them by their right hand. Keep them safe, them and their loved ones. We bring them under the canopy of Psalms 91 and the covering, cleansing power of the blood. As we've been blessed coming in, bless them as they go out. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God a hand. Praise We are dismissed. God bless. Amen, amen, amen.